All right. We're at just about three o'clock, so we are going to begin uh, shortly with the Facebook Live broadcast of our welcome panel. We're going to give a couple more minutes so we can get people logged in and all ready to go. Uh, my name is Chris Lafuria. I'll be with you this afternoon, and we have uh, another panel with Residence Life. We have Student Life, ROTC, and the Health Center. So uh, stick with us for a couple minutes, and we will get set and ready to go soon. All right, thank you for joining us today. We have our panel uh, for new student orientation. We understand that there's going to be several different audiences here today. We have our new students who are coming into Edinburgh University this fall. We might have some prospective students and families who are checking out the university. We have people that are just looking to um, make it to the weekend and they're already on Facebook just browsing. Uh, we have alumni, we have community members, and we have people that have joined us uh, for those of you that don't have this marked in your calendar, this is our second welcome panel. We have another series of speakers that are going to be giving their orientation panel. Um, since we are unable to have these sessions on campus, we are doing things virtually. Um, we have our student bridge, which is our, our virtual experience that students have signed up for to take a tour of campus and to get some background information. We have, we've had the first welcome panel earlier this uh, summer. That is on our YouTube channel and in our Facebook profile. You can go back and check that. And then we have um, today's panel, and then we will have individual meetings with academic departments and programs here on campus in a little bit. I'm gonna give some brief introductions and then a couple more housekeeping items before we get started. Um, we have, th and this is gonna be the order of speakers too, so you'll know when to pay attention if you have certain questions. I see we have some questions coming into the comments. Um, First up, we're gonna have Haley Atkins with the Gehring Health Center. We have Tom Anderson, the enrollment officer with the ROTC program. How y'all doing? We have Dave Goodwill, um, who's gonna be talking about student life, campus life, and, and Greek life. Welcome everyone. And then last but not least, we have Amber Witten from Residence Life and Housing. Hi. So I noticed we have a lot of people coming in here. Um, we have some questions showing up already. Uh, please submit your questions in the comments. We will try our hardest to get to all of these and we will make sure um, that they get answered whether it's on this, um, this session or whether it's individually. Um, these are representatives from the, the campus community. So um, if we have to find the, the questions or the answer to these questions, we will. A couple important things for students that are paying attention, make sure you are checking your email and logging into your My Edinburgh account there you will be getting your arrangements for moving in, um, to signing up for a time. You'll be getting important updates as far as um, the start of the semester, a lot of important residence life uh, questions will be answered there. So make sure you're checking your campus email or any email you provided to us and then signing into your My Edinburgh portal. Uh, if you're unaware of how to, to do that or if you haven't done so, make sure you, con um, you contact somebody from the orientation team uh, to get to get going and to, to get that started. Also, this video will be available on YouTube. It will be, be available um, through Facebook and we will make sure that if somebody is unable to access these through these channels, we will get this video to them. We would, uh, we would hate for anybody to, to miss out on the information. With that said, we're gonna turn things over to Haley Atkins, um, who is a clinical case manager at the Gehring uh, Health and Wellness Center. She's gonna talk a little bit about her area so let's spotlight Haley and, and um, welcome, to a, welcome to our welcoming panel. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. Um, as Chris said, I'm the case manager at the Gearing Health and Wellness Center. But basically, just so you guys know, the health center is a really good place to go to. I know it can be very boring sometimes, but you can get all your medical services at 
gearing. So we're kind of set up like a doctor's office. We have a lot of basic, you know, basic medical stuff for you. We have registered nurses. We have a physician on staff. Um, so if you're ever sick, you can come over here. You can call ahead of time. And we're open um, typically pretty late hours too. And that also includes weekends. So even if something happens over the weekend, you can come here. Another really good thing too about the health center is we do have mental health services as well. So those are typically a short-term model for counseling, but say if you needed something else beyond that or just needed resources, we still have people to help you with that as well. Um, and just so you guys know for the health center portion, there should be something coming out through email about meningitis forms from both housing and us at the health center. So just check your email, be sure you're aware of that. Um, the other thing that we require to the health center is just if students can send a picture of their health insurance card front and back, just so that we have that on record. If you have a list of immunizations, that would also be helpful. And then we also look for a confidential health record, both front and back. And you can find those if you just type on the Edinburgh website, student health services. Um, so that's pretty much it for that. And then if you're looking more into the mental health stuff through us as well, if you put in counseling and psychological services also on the Edinburgh website, you'll find out more information about us too. So hopefully that's helpful. I'm, I'm muted, so that's not embarrassing at all. Um, so we're gonna keep going. Uh, Tom Anderson, uh, he is our enrollment officer for ROTC. Um, ROTC plays a big role on campus. They're part of our commencement ceremony. They're part of our football games. If you ever see a score a touchdown, you'll hear the ROTC cannon. Um, we commission second lieutenants every year. Um, we have, like I said, we have about 65 cadets. A lot of them participate in courses, training activities. We made it to the Ranger Challenge a little bit ago. There's, there, there's just a really dedicated bunch of students. So Tom Anderson uh, is going to talk a little bit about ROTC, how you can get involved, and what it means to be part of that cadre. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, like Chris said, I'm Tom Anderson. I'm the enrollment officer for the Army ROTC program here on campus. Um, our program is about developing leadership in the students on campus and inevitably to try make Army officers, whether it be on active duty in the Army National Guard or in the Army Reserves. Um, our program is open to all students on campus, um, even those that aren't looking to make a career or serve in the military. Uh, students can take our courses and participate in our program all four years and learn, uh, earn a, a minor in adaptive leadership and military studies. Uh, it's one of the unique aspects of our program. Uh, our Classes are a combination of in-classroom and hands-on experience. Um, every class will have a in-classroom experience uh, once or twice a week. And then on Thursday afternoons, we will have our leadership lab and that's where we do a hands-on practical applications of uh, the things that we're talking about or learning in the classroom, getting into the army skills and tactics and, and training. All that stuff that we do in the classroom and then on the on our leadership labs will then culminate with a an event later on in the semester where we will go leave the university and go to an army installation nearby and do a weekend worth of training and um, some things that we can't do here on campus like going on repel towers and uh, paintball guns and land navigation stuff and some small arms firing um, beyond that we have our students uh, have the opportunity to participate in uh, summer training as well. Uh, some summer internships where they can shadow active duty officers uh, for a month on an active duty installation. Our nurse students get to work in an army hospital um, and are supervised by an army nurse. They get to spend 30 days doing things that they can't do in the nursing program on campus. Um, the army gives them a little additional instruction, gives them more opportunities to do. Uh, 
things that uh, will prepare them to be very successful when they uh, graduate and become RNs. They also have the opportunity to compete for an airborne or air assault, air assault slot, excuse me. So if you'd like to jump out of an airplane or repel out of helicopters, we have the opportunities for you to do that as well. Um, physical fitness is a very important part of being in the military. So we do our physical fitness uh, three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, it's open to all the students. Anybody can come and join us. Sometimes we'll even get the athletic teams involved and we do some partnerships with uh, the football team or the basketball team, volleyball teams, and get them out there to do something a little bit different and do some army physical training and uh, some team building exercises. Um, another big part of our program is academics. Um, that's why everybody's here is to get, uh, get their degree and be as successful academically as possible. Um, in our program, we help uh, counsel our students and provide them a guide, get them from start to finish and keep them on track. It's called an academic worksheet uh, where we'll sit down with them each semester and review where they stand academically within their major as well as within the ROTC program. And also it forces our students to seek the counsel of their academic advisors and um, their peer mentors that we have within the program. Um, so each semester they will sit down with our, our cadre or their instructor here and look at their performance, see where they stand. Also looking at forward to what classes they need to take um, this semester, the following semesters that will be prerequisites or have prerequisite requirements for their junior and senior year so that they stay on graduation track. Um, one of the big things about ROTC is financial assistance. Um, all of our contracted cadets, once they make that commitment to Grad, to complete our program and become a commission officer, receive a stipend, a monthly stipend. And there's also scholarship opportunities. Um, the ROTC program has great scholarship opportunities that provides 100% of your tuition and fees while you're going to school, $1,200 a year for a book allowance. Um, and we also have housing scholarships available for those that want to live in the ROTC living learning communities in Lawrence Towers. Um, as Chris mentioned, we're a big part of campus. We do a lot of functions on campus. We'd like to be integrated in, in all the campus activities as much as we possibly can. We have a color guard uh, that we try to do a color guard and present the colors for at least one time for each of all the athletic teams on campus. Uh, you mentioned the cannon crew. We have a cannon detail for all the home football games and every time we score, we, we shoot the cannon. Um, our big event on campus is the Veterans Day ceremony where we um, reflect upon all those who have served and those that are students on campus as well as faculty and um, members here in the community also participate in, as well as typically our freshman move-in days and orientations and things that happen on campus. So you'll see a lot of people running around on campus in uniform, stop, say hi. Um, they're here they're just like you, students on campus, as well as some of the faculty here. So we look forward to having you in the program, having, having you here on campus this fall. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. All right, Tom, thank you so much for the information about ROTC. Um, like you said, very active on campus, um, whether it's you know staying in shape, staying disciplined, you know, learning leadership or continuing with the career in, in the military, there's, there's all sorts of opportunities for you. Uh, in the ROTC program. All right, um, I see a lot of questions coming in and I just want to um, kind of reiterate that some of these questions can be answered by just looking at your My Edinburgh portal. Um, everything from learning where the library is to getting your parking permit. Um, a lot of these things are gonna be found just in your My Edinburgh portal. So um, if you could just, when you have a chance this afternoon, this week, sometime next week, look through My Edinburgh and see if there's just familiarize yourself with the content, um, trying to find out where things are, because um, not only you're going to be needing it before you start school, but you're going to need it throughout the, the academic year too. Um, and there's there's all sorts of information. Also, if you go to our website www.edinburgh.edu, if you just search for something you're looking for, um, I guarantee you'll be able to find a page for it. So if you just go to the website and search for parking pass, you'll find it. If you're going to look for access office where you can find your ID, you'll find that there too. So I encourage you to look at the Edinburgh University website and also my Edinburgh for a lot of these um, these topics that we're discussing today. Also, if you if you do get to um, 
uh, ask questions in the comments. If we don't get to them today, we will answer them. So um, if, if you do have questions, make sure you, you submit those in the comments section. All right, we're gonna move over to um, our campus and residence <coughs> life uh, folks. We're gonna talk about uh, what, what it's gonna look like on campus this fall. So we're gonna start with Dave Goodwell, um, who, who's gonna talk a little bit about student life. So what's, what's campus life like uh, for, for Edinburgh students, Dave? Yeah, Chris. Um, so as Chris mentioned, my name is Dave Goodwill. I'm the Interim Director of Student Life at Edinburgh University. Um, campus is going to look different this fall. There's no doubt about that. Um, many of the things that we would normally see in a in-person uh, activity will be in a hybrid or a virtual setting. Um, but I am still going to kind of talk about all the different options that we have on campus because we still will be offering something for everybody. Um, it just will look a little different and maybe the, del the delivery process. Um, so first I wanna talk briefly about the University Programming Board and kind of segueing into Welcome Weekend. So as many of you know, um, the dates for Welcome Weekend were released. Um, in the past, Welcome Weekend has been a very, uh, very much a face-to-face uh, -face interaction and that will have a, a hybrid feel to it. There will be virtual components. Um, there will also be some uh, in-person activities as well, um, as long as the, uh, the COVID uh, virus does not uh, have any outbreaks on campus. Um, kind of talking about the programming board in general, uh, they do everything from in-person movies on campus, bus trips, um, activities, weekly activities, bingo nights, trivia nights, um, make and take things, uh, build a bear, all those different types of activities are things that the university programming board puts on. Um, on a weekly basis. Um, the, uh, I think the biggest thing to note this year is that we're gonna have to just, we're all gonna have to figure it out together. Um, and the hybrid option is what we are going to explore. Um, kind of moving on to our fitness center and our recreational services. Um, the fitness center will be open for the fall semester. Uh, social distancing will be uh, in place and we are working hard right now to just ensure that we can get machines spaced out and we can get it so that everything can happen. Uh, we are still looking to offer group fitness activities. Um, we are still also looking to offer our recreational sports activities. So uh, intramural sports, um, they will have a, a little different feel to it, but um, we we'll still will offer those opportunities to students um, on a weekly basis. Um, we have kind of jumping into our, our club sports and clubs and organizations in general. Um, currently, we have 14 club sports on campus. Um, Many of those clubs can be found by going to your My Edinburgh portal um, and then searching for Engage EU. Um, that is where you would find any club or organization on campus. Um, there will be an involvement fair or a club rush uh, of some type. Um, it will likely be a virtual component. Um, but if you want to get a jump start, I encourage everyone to go to your portal, uh, go to Engage EU, and then search for clubs and organizations that you might be interested in. Um, you can also reach out directly to me, and I would be happy to connect you with any member club president on campus. Um, as far as clubs and organizations go, um, once again, uh, you know, we just kind of keep reiterating that it, it is going to look a little different, um, but we are expecting that all clubs are active um, and that they are navigating these tough times with everybody else. Um, we talked a little bit about Club Rush. Um, that will, the, the date for that has not yet been determined, but we do expect it to happen within the first two weeks of the, the fall semester. Um, kind of moving on to our outdoor adventure activities. Uh, we have a, a core program um, that does everything from skydiving to whitewater rafting, backpacking, mountain biking, um, you name it, we kind of do it. And uh, we're still looking to see how that's going to look this fall. Um, and one of our, our highlights of the year is always our spring break trip, um, which fortunately that doesn't happen until the spring semester. Um, so we, uh, there's, there's full hope that that will happen um, as normal. Um, and a lot of our other activities, we're hoping that we can create the social distancing guidelines and, and still conduct those activities as normal. Um, kind of moving on to our Greek life. Uh, we do have a vibrant Greek life experience on campus. Uh, we have nine um, nationally recognized organizations. Um, we are looking to defer recruitment for any incoming freshmen until the spring semester, just so that we can properly acclimate people to campus. Um, and just kind of a, a side note that our sorority GPAs are among the highest on campus. So a lot of people are, you know, they, they think that 
joining a Greek organization shouldn't be one of the first things that they do when they get to campus um, or joining an organization in general, but just the, the data actually shows that, that young ladies and young men that join organizations typically have a higher GPA than those of their uh, counterparts that don't join organizations. Um, another program that we do offer here on campus is our National Society of Leadership and Success. Um, so this is a, a leadership program uh, right now, it is currently not for credit, um, but it is something that anybody can take part in um, and uh, be an active member to. So um, all of these options and, and different things that I just spoke about are available on our website. Uh, they're available on our social media platforms. Um, and there, you, know, you can always reach out to me, email me, call me, whatever, to kind of get in more information about how to get involved and engaged um, at Edinburgh University. All right, Dave, thank you so much. Um, I, I have seen, uh, one thing I want to uh, interrupt our flow with just a second is to talk about student IDs. Um, we, if you go to our website and type in Access Office, you can get a lot of information about obtaining your student ID. But also, if you're part of the new student orientation group, there is a spot on that virtual experience page that we sent you on the first day that has an entire PDF about getting your, your student ID um, and there's also contact information. So in the comments, we're going to, um, we're going to post the link to the uh, virtual orientation experience. And then if you access that link and then go to get connected, there is a um, section for student ID. So you'll learn a little bit about your student ID and you're also going to get a, a safe and easy method for getting your ID. From there, uh, it's just a matter of waiting for the ID to arrive or contacting our access office to get that information. Um, so from there, um, we're going to go over to our residence life and housing representative, Amber Witten. Um, there have been a couple questions coming in um, and we will make sure we get to those, um, but we're gonna hear from Amber about, about residence life. So welcome, Amber. Hi everyone. Um, as said before, my name is Amber Witten. I'm the assistant director of residence life and housing at Edinburgh University. Um, in our department, we have eight graduate hall coordinators, um, and they serve as the paraprofessional presence in the hall. Uh, we also have a total of 32 RAs. Uh, we did open a um, new building, well, not new building, but returning building, um, Highland 7 this year uh, for COVID housing. Um, and so we staff that with pretty talented folks to help you with your adjustment or any needs that you may have. Um, as far as COVID housing is concerned, I'm sure that most of you know um, that we are only placing one person in each bedroom. Um, that is to make sure that you have a space where you're, you know, just yourself. Um, there's no, hopefully, um, ability to contaminate yourself in a, in a bedroom um, and that you can take your mask off and kind of enjoy your space and be a person in your room. Um, and so we are housing uh, people in, um, singles um, as such, and people in doubles will have their own space. Um, and so the important thing to note there um, are the changes in our housing rates. Um, so make sure that you go online and look at those housing rates adjustments. We've also sent an email about that so you understand. Um, we also prorated it because we understand that the university is not going to have in-person classes after November 21st. Um, so if you have questions about the rates, um, you can call our office. Um, let's see. We have community spaces in the residence halls. So we do have laundry facilities and gathering rooms and lounges. Um, so you can kind of chill out and hang out. Um, but we are limited, uh, eliminating half the furniture. So that way there is social distanced um, socializing. Um, and we will be having facilities come in multiple times a day to ensure that they're disinfecting and wiping down whatever they may need. Um, part of that, though, is taking personal onus of the spaces in which you enter. Um, so if you are to enter the communal kitchen, uh, we ask that you clean it up, not just for sanitary reasons for like food contamination and whatnot, um, but if a lot of folks are using that space, we want to make sure um, that it's not just coming from the university that we're cleaning, it's that we're taking personal ownership for ourselves as well. Um, we will require masks within the residence hall. Um, so if you are in your suite, um, you can take the masks off, 
but when you're doing laundry or cooking or walking out to your classes, we do ask that you are wearing a mask because it is a university building and you, you don't know who you're going to be interacting with in that lobby. Um, and so when you're headed off to class, just make sure you put on your mask um, and you know, you can take it off when you walk outside as long as you're not going to be in close quarters with other people. Um, and then once again, when you're going into your academic building. Um, let me see. Uh, we are allowing early arrivals. Um, a lot of people have questions about early arrivals. There is a form on your My Housing portal that you have to fill out and be approved for before you um, come to campus. So um, we're not actually allowing any early arrivals before Monday, August 10th. And um, unless you are with another uh, organization or sport um, or, thing, or something of that nature, um, because we're trying to limit the amount of people on campus. Also, we do not have staff on campus at that point um, to assist in transitional needs. Um, and so we're trying to be strategic and also, um, you know, we have to make sure that your students are safe. Um, so if you need to arrive before designated move-in days, you can apply on your My Housing portal. Um, be sure to express what date um, and why, um, because it's not guaranteed just because you fill out the application that you're going to get approved. Um, with that, um, if, if, the, if, if there's absolutely no way you can't not move in on August 7th or 8th or 9th or something of that nature, you'll have to contact our office um, and we, we may grant you that, um, but it is very, very slim to none. So just plan for no early arrival beyond August 10th. Um, speaking of move-in, um, we did send two emails out with links. Um, the first email did have an error in it, so we apologize for that, but the second email has all of the links. Now, uh, for move-in signups, move-in signups, it has to be an organized process because we have to limit the amount of people in the building going in and out um, and within your uh, floors. And we, we do understand that folks are bringing some uh, guardians, parents, family, friends. Uh, we are limiting, limiting that to two folks with you. So two folks can come and help you move in. Um, so just be aware of that, that there needs to be arrangements made if you were planning on bringing like your cousin's cousin. Um, but anyway, so we wanna limit the amount of people. Um, we're trying not to create a large group situation. Um, it's going to be very strategic on how you um, unload your car, get, get the move-in bin, um, you know, park your car and like get in line for the elevator or whatever may have you. All of those details will be sent via email in the next two weeks. Um, and then Dave and I are hoping to have another session um, on Facebook to talk about the specific move-in um, procedure and then also welcome weekend. Um, so we're looking forward to that. Um, but the move-in slots were sent to you. Um, if you find that um, all the slots in your designated time, time slot are filled, feel free to contact our office, contact me. We'll make an adjustment or we'll give you permission to arrive a little bit early. Um, so if you're a returning student and you're supposed to move in on Saturday or Sunday, we can accommodate you moving in on Friday or Thursday if there's slots available. Um, hold on. Um, if you haven't filled out your housing application, we do have some slots available on campus. Um, so don't assume that just because you haven't yet that we've run out of spots, but they are going fast. Um, so be sure to fill out that application um, very soon. And be sure to check your emails from us. Um, sometimes our um, housing system, somehow, somehow it winds up in the junk mail. So make sure you check your other inboxes because if you don't open certain uh, types of emails, they'll go directly to your junk or your other inbox um, because your Outlook is a smart system and realizes that you never open it. Um, so be sure that you open all mail from our office. And if you have questions, feel free to contact us. All right, uh, thank you for that one. Um, appreciate everybody's uh, responses and everybody's explanations. We do have a couple questions. Um, we've been sending links and contacts for all of the questions that have 
been coming in, and there are some that um, I think we could we could answer as a group. Um, as, as I said before, we have student life, residence life, ROTC, and Gehring. So some some of these questions are for different offices, such as financial aid and admissions. So if you just leave your comment, uh, we will um, make sure that gets the right person. The the first question that we had, um, Haley, I think you might be able to answer this. Uh, somebody asked if uh, flu shots are going to be available on campus this this fall or this spring or when, whenever flu shot season is. I want to get back to you on that. Not that I'm aware of currently, so I will let you know. Okay, we will we will look into we will look into flu shots. Um, Amber, I know you've given this presentation a, a couple times about room sizes and everything. But we had a couple questions coming in about um, how big the bed sizes are, so that people can order sheets and bedding. Sure. Um, so the bed sizes in all singles of the Highlands is a full or double bed. Um, now all doubles in the Highlands are a twin XL. Um, because you will have your own room, as long as it doesn't block your exit and entrance from the room, you can actually push those two together because you won't be expecting a roommate in the fall. Um, so you would have to do the math on twin XL times two, but I think that's a king size. Um, so if you want a larger bed, um, I would just research that and figure out what sheets to buy. Um, we're not sure of our housing plan for the spring, um, but don't expect a roommate in the fall. So you can technically use all furniture that's in that room. Um, as far as our traditional um, bed size, it's a standard twin. And so if you're in Lawrence Towers, you will have a standard twin. Um, again, you're welcome to push the beds together if that's up, that's up to you. Um, but in our Highlands uh, 7, because it was a closed building last year and we have started to reuse furniture in that area, there's not a guarantee that you'll have two beds if you're in a double. Um, so I would just plan for a standard twin XL. All right, Amber, thank you so much. Um, Dave, uh, if you could go over Greek life, just, just a little bit of a uh, little point about it. One question came in about um, Greek life recruitment. Um, can you give a little bit of an explanation about how that's going to look this, um, this fall or spring or, or whenever it's scheduled? Yeah, absolutely. So um, normally we would, um, incoming freshmen, sophomore, juniors, they would all be able, organizations would be able to recruit you um, in the fall semester. Uh, this fall, we will not be recruiting uh, incoming freshmen. Um, transfer students will be able to recruit, um, but incoming freshmen uh, will have to wait until the spring semester to join a Greek organization. And that's really just um, so that we can work through everything and, and make the experience the, uh, enjoyable for everyone. All right, thank you, Dave. Um, and I think one, I think, one question coming in for Amber, um, there was, from the looks of it, a, a parent or relative that was concerned that their student's roommate was changed or they're looking to get a roommate changed. Can you, can you talk about the process of what, what goes into changing a roommate or something like that occurring? Um, sure. So, and I'll give you a little background as well. With COVID-19, um, we were given new housing regulations of what was appropriate um, for our health department. And so with that, we completely um, dumped our system and started over. Um, so you may have seen a difference between, you know, March or April till June, right? Um, so you may have had a change in roommate already. Um, if you prefer to live with your previous roommate or you have a friend that you want to, you can just call our office prior to the semester starting and we can try our best to arrange that. Um, it's, it's not a guarantee because that other person has to request you as well. So we need communication from both people to like live in the same suite together. Um, and then as far as the process in the academic year, they would talk to their resident assistant or their graduate hall coordinator to say, hey, I really don't like living in this particular space or whatever may have you and we try our best to accommodate that. There is a bit of a developmental opportunity there though. So if they're just uncomfortable and aren't communicating, we will put them through an, uh, an, um, a mediation um, just to personally develop their ability to communicate with one another and work through their differences. 
Um, but if it is a safety issue or a financial issue, we will automatically push for that room change to occur as fast as possible. Um, because there are people that sign up for a more expensive room type and realize halfway through the semester that they need to move to our traditional um, housing because it is more financial, financially, financially sound um, for certain populations or certain people on our campus. Um, as far as uh, COVID-19 roommate changes, uh, we are trying our best to make any changes to roommates prior to their arrival. Um, because everyone has their own room, um, we are, there would only be maybe suite mate concerns or financial concerns. And so if that's the case, we can work with you case by case basis, but we're not actually opening it up for anybody. Um, they would have to reach out to our office to get approval. Um, so if you find that in, and we also have a room change period or room change freeze period. So basically the first two weeks when they're on campus, they can't move because we're currently doing occupancy verification and making sure everyone has shown up um, to campus that it that that are paying for our accommodations. Um, and so with that process, we have a pause. We don't want anyone to move unless it's an emergency situation. And beyond that, um, I would just know that we will accommodate, um, but it will be case by case basis, depending on urgency because of COVID. All right. Um, there were there were a couple more questions that came in for residence life. Um, so uh, a scenario, a student has a um, you know non-traditional guardianship. So whether there's divorced parents or things like that, and both families are interested in coming for move-in days, um, they were wondering if they could maybe sign up for two different times so that both families could visit. Um, or are there any sort of arrangements we have for that? Or, or is it something we have to look into? Um, I would say that you would just need to sign up for one time because it's a three hour period, um, but there can only be two people at one time. And so if you have um, a non-traditional uh, family dynamic or uh, I, would, I would say like maybe one half can do an hour and a half and the other one can do the other hour and a half. Um, but I would not sign up for two times. And again, it is a limit of two people total. All right, uh, how about, um, what was the other question? Um, how, do, how are students gonna know what, what floor their rooms are so they can choose the right link? Yeah, a lot of people have had this question. Um, so it's good that you asked. Uh, so typically, all right, say you live in 2101A. So the two represents your building. The first number represents your building. The second one represents your floor. Um, so I, if I was in 2101A, I'd be in Highlands 2, first floor, and then the A uh, bedroom. Now with towers, uh, it's just three numbers, and the first number will indicate your floor. All right, and the last, I think the last residence life housing, residence life and housing question we have, um, where did it go? How many bathrooms are in a semi-suite single with four people? Um, so the semi-suite single with four people will have one bathroom. Um, it is a divided bathroom. So one space has the shower and one space has the toilet area. Um, and the sinks are on the outside of the, um, the, those two areas. Um, we were doing COVID accommodations for like one person per bedroom, two per bathroom. Um, but after talking to our health department, we found that it's okay to host or to house four people in a suite with only one bathroom. Um, and so that has changed dynamics on how we've housed as well. Um, so there will be one bathroom in a semi-suite uh, single. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Um, we're going to go right back over to Dave Goodwill. Uh, he has a couple more points to talk about when it comes to student life. So Dave, the floor is all yours. Yes, one thing I forgot to mention is that um, for those of you that are looking for student employment on campus, um, we still do have positions within campus life um, and student life, the Polk Student Center of Recreation. Um, to apply for jobs, simply go to your My Edinburgh portal 
um, and click on the student employment tab um, in the, uh, the little icons in the middle of the page. Um, and then look down through the um, either the fall of the fall or spring tabs. Um, just as a point of reference, some departments, um, you might find jobs in both of those areas that are available. So just wanted to mention that we do have jobs in the Polk Student Center Recreation Campus Life still available. All right, uh, thank you so much, Dave. Uh, and thank you so much. We're gonna switch back up to this gallery view so we can see everybody's uh, nice shining faces before we leave. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for the questions and for attending our panel. Uh, if you still have questions after watching this, please continue to send them um, uh, comment or post them in the comments or send us a direct message if it's not something that you want to, um, to talk about public. Also, we have the orientation email address. Um, let me dig that up for you, too. So some of you might not really want to post your question um, publicly. You want a, a private answer to this. That's fine. You could send it to us a direct message, or you can email boroughorientation at edinburgh.edu. That's B-O-R-O-O-R-I-E-N-T-A-T-I-O-N -O -O -E at edinburgh.edu. Um, we'll continue to monitor these questions, see if anybody has any, any additional thoughts. Um, from there, we'd like to thank our guests. We have Amber, Tom, Haley, and Dave. And once again, my name is Chris. Uh, we look forward to seeing everybody, and we look forward to answering everybody's questions. So uh, thank you so much for joining us today here at Edinburgh University.